Solomon said, give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this, your people, that is so great? And God said to Solomon, because this was in your heart, and you have not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of your enemies, neither yet have asked long life, but have asked wisdom and knowledge for yourself, that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king. Verse 12, wisdom and knowledge is granted to you, and I will give you riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had that have been before you, neither shall there any after you have the light. Do y'all capture that? Somebody open the door. Do you capture that? And get a hold of that, you guys. Get a hold of that. Because he didn't ask for wisdom, because, excuse me, he asked for wisdom, but because he didn't ask for riches, because he didn't ask for wealth, swell, because he didn't ask for honor, nor the life, nor the life of his enemies, God still gave it to him. That's like you, Stephen. That's like you asking, that's like you, God, see, I'm going to catch you up with real quick for anybody just joining us on YouTube or on Facebook. Swim just walked in, Steve just walked in with, with, with his family, with his peoples, right? What, 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 what breaking down to the people is, the, the title of this sermon is God pulled up on Solomon, Stephen. God pulled up on Solomon. You, you a rapper, you know how Nicki Minaj rapper, you can pull up, you can get it, right? God pulled up on Solomon back in verse 7 and said, In that night did God appear to Solomon and asked him and said to him, Ask what I should give him. Could you imagine that? You chilling in the, in the, in the lab with Cheetah with my son, y'all writing music. And God pops up in the room. He shows up. He pulls up on Swim. He pulls up on Cheetah. He pulls up on Tyrone Burton. What are we going to ask him? I was saying earlier, we're gonna act. Normally, people like us, when we're stuck in vanity or we're stuck in things that really don't matter, we're like, "Oh God, well, give me a hundred, give me a hundred, give me a hundred followers on Instagram, give me a million views on YouTube." But look what Solomon asked for. Solomon said to God, "You show great mercy to David, my father, and have made me to reign in his stead. Now, O oh Lord God, let your promise to David, my father, be established." For you have made me king over a people like the dust of the earth and multitude. Verse 10. Give me now wisdom and knowledge. This is what he asked for. He didn't ask for a million followers, a million views on YouTube. He didn't ask for 100K followers on Instagram or a million followers on Instagram. He asked God. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this your people? That is so great. Understand that King Solomon had a responsibility. He was the king, swim. So he had to, he could have been like the kings of the old days and, and didn't regard God's will and just was a, a dictator, a leader of these people and didn't really care about the people and just ruled the people with harshness. But King Solomon had a heart and mind enough to ask God, give me wisdom and knowledge. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this your people that is so great? For God, now look what God said. God said to Solomon, because this was in your heart, and you have not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of your enemies, neither yet have asked long life, but have asked wisdom and knowledge for yourself, that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king. Look at, look at God. Jesus, God said, wisdom and knowledge is granted to you. And I will give you riches and wealth. He didn't ask for wisdom. He didn't ask for knowledge. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't ask for, did, let's fix that. He didn't ask for wealth. He didn't ask for riches. He didn't ask for honor. He asked, give me, focus on this y'all, give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this your people that is so great? His heart 
was right. He was wanting to be a, a good leader, a good king. He was he cared about the people. He cared about the people. God, God, give me wisdom, give me knowledge to rule this people. It's like Nicholas Kennedy has passed in this church. Myself, Tyrone Burton, as one of the leaders, as one of the preachers in this church. If we keep the mind state of the people, we're going to continue to do right. And never get sidetracked. It's got to be the people. When we have a church, we, you got to look at King Solomon. He had a mind for the people. God, give me wisdom, knowledge to rule your people. So when people get caught up in other things, bad things happen. But when we focus on God, when we focus God's house, preaching is not a game. Preaching is not, it is not to be taken lightly. Preaching is an office. Preaching is a responsibility. Feed my people, teach my people, help my people. People are dying and going to hell. People need to know. People need this word broken down so they can understand how to operate their life, how to get the best life they possibly can get in this earth. So that's why God gives some preachers, evangelists, teachers, prophets, apostles, for the edifying of the body of Christ, to build us up, for the perfecting of the saints. So this story right here, this sermon titled God Pulled Up on Solomon is a, is, a, is a lesson in it. Look what God said. And God said, this is verse 11, chapter 1 of Chronicles, 2 Chronicles. And God said to Solomon, because this was in your heart, and you have not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of your enemies, neither yet have asked long life, but have asked wisdom and knowledge for yourself that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king. Look at Jesus, look at God. Verse 12, wisdom and knowledge is granted to you. Swim, Isaiah, anybody watching through YouTube via Facebook, wisdom and knowledge is granted to you and I will give you riches and wealth and honor such as none of the kings have had that have been before you, neither shall there any after you have the light. So understand, Swim, King Solomon was set up. You had many kings in the earth. You created the Swim Dance. You created that. You got some new cats that come in or whatever they want to do, right? Listen, when God, when God blesses you, can't nobody take away from that. You know you created it. So, that's a creative dance you created. North Carolina, where Michael Jordan's from. If you become famous in three months or a year because of the swim dance you created or some music you create, and now you set up as king. I'm set up as king. God bless me. The Warner Brothers offer me another show. I did Parenthood, I played TK, I was that so Raven's boyfriend. God give me a, a big movie in Hollywood. Nicholas Kennedy, God blesses him with some money miraculously. We open up a big church. You're set up as king, I'm set up as king. Isaiah, you're set up as king. Now, the Bible just told us that Solomon, look at this. Wisdom and knowledge is granted to you, and I will give you riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had that have been before you. Do y'all hear that? God is telling Solomon. Remember, God pulled up on Solomon, and this is what he told him. Wisdom and knowledge, because remember, that's what he asked for. He didn't ask for a million views on YouTube. He asked for, give me, you know, give me wisdom and knowledge so I can rule your people, right? Wisdom and knowledge is granted to you. God's talking to Solomon. And I will give you riches. When God pull up on you, Cardi B said, pull up, you can, you know, you, you can pull up, you can get it. When God pull up on you, you can get the best life you can ever have. You can be set up as a king. Look what God, when he pulled up on Solomon, look what he told Solomon. Wisdom and knowledge is granted to you. I'm giving you what you asked for. But because you didn't ask for these events, if anybody in here want to be in poverty, want to struggle, want to, want to have to look for money, Call, beg people for money. How many people want to beg people for money? Raise your hand. How many people want to have a have a lot of money? Want to be want to be well off? Want to be able to, if you have a need or you want something, you're able to get it. How many people want that type of life? The Bible tells us, y'all, what to do to get that type of life. 
Obey God. Obey Jesus. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Not only could he make you a king or a queen, he can make you the best at what you do. I can become, when I die, I can be the best. I, my, my desire is to be the best actor I can be. I've been putting the work in this thing since I was like 11, even with my brothers, Sean and Daryl. All my brothers. Me, Sean, and Daryl are the three oldest. Then you got A, B, D, B, and J, B. Those are the younger ones. We used to, when the Living Color used to come on, we used to entertain my mother. So we was acting way before professionally. At an age of 11, I started acting professionally. But I didn't just become famous on TV in 1990. I, I, came, I became famous to the world in 1997. God did that. I'm this young kid in Boston doing my thing, but I, I'm, I'm telling y'all I'm telling y'all this for a purpose or reason. Whatever you put your hands to and work on, God will bless you. The Bible lets us know that. So I'm in Boston. I'm working on my acting. Me and my brothers are acting and Living Color comes on. We're impersonating in Living Color trying to make my mother laugh. Then I go to a youth center. My dad tell my mother to send Darren and Tyrone to the youth center. We go to the youth center. I stop. We get help from Emmett Fogart. And Al Skeet's got us playing basketball. I stop acting. I do commercials. I do my first movie. Uh, I do my first TV show. That uh, I become, bless you, I become you. the Fox 25 Kids Club host. Then I do a movie, Squeeze. Squeeze plays in three cities, New York, L.A., and Boston. Squeeze comes to Hollywood. Hollywood calls Boston, calls Emmett Fogart and, and myself. We want to know if you're interested in auditioning for the role TK. God allowed Warner Brothers basically to fly me to Hollywood. I get to Hollywood and guess what I had to do? I had to use the keys of this kingdom. If we want some things, if we want to be set up as kings, we want the things of God, we got to learn the word of God and put the word of God to, to use. So I'm at Warner Brothers and I'm praying, I'm drinking my water. Father, bless me. Hire me to play the role TK in Jesus Christ's name. Keep in mind, I already worked on my script. I started a practice. I've been practicing, running this thing. LeBron, when he come in, when he come in LA, day one, he's gonna be, he gonna be practicing. He's gonna be doing his layups. He's gonna be shooting his free throws. He's gonna be doing things he need to do in the game. I was doing what I had to do, and I, I had to do my script. I had to run my script. It's a responsibility, it's a job. So many people want fame, but they don't want to put in the work. I put in the work. LeBron James put in the work. When Swim created that dance, Swim dance, he put in the work. When you wrote that song, when you write a song, you put in the work. So when you put in the work, with God's blessing, we can be set up as kings and queens in this earth. So I want you to be encouraged, folks. Wisdom and knowledge, wisdom and knowledge is granted to you. This is what God told Solomon. And I will give you riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had that have been before you. Neither have there any after you have the light. So what God told Solomon is right there in the scriptures. Do y'all want to be average or y'all want to be above average? I don't know about you, but I want to be above average. How many people want to be average? How many people want to be above average? Say, say I want to be above average. You want to be above average. So in order to be above average, you got to do stuff that other men and other women ain't doing. You got to wake up and read your words, spend time with God. So King Solomon, I'm going to share this verse one more time and I'm going to move forward to verse 13. Wisdom and knowledge is granted to you and I will give you riches and wealth and honor such as none of the kings have had that have been before you. God, the sermon, the title of this sermon is God pulled up on Solomon and look what he said when he, when he pulled up on him. I will give you riches and wealth and honor such as none of the kings have had that have been before you, neither shall there any after you have the light. So if you guys, if we want to be the best actors in this world, the best rappers in this world, the best doctors, the best musicians, whatever you want to do, you guys, put your hand to it. God says, if you would, whatever, whatever you put your hand to, I will prosper it. Put the work in. LeBron James put the work in. Michael, ja Michael Jackson put the work in. He's dead and gone. But he's remembered. After his death, he's remembered for what he created. Put the work in. Whatever you guys like doing, put the work in. And do God's will and watch him set you up as great as he set up the Michael Jordans, the Michael Jacksons, the Dr. Kings. Come on. So we have to understand if we want to be above average, we have to do something other men ain't doing. Other men is waking up forgetting God. They're going to work and getting their money. I got to get my money. I got to pay these bills. But you got some men in this earth that's waking up looking to the scriptures. What do God say this morning? What is God talking to me? What is God saying? You got some men. That's what I do. 
I wake up and the Bible tells me. Why am I doing it? Because God tells us. Jesus told us in, in, in Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all of his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Matthew, Matthew 6 and 33, you guys. That's a key scripture to remember. We're getting ready to conclude this message. So y'all stay, stay tuned. Stay focused in. And, and, and pay attention to God's words, y'all. Matthew Amen. 3. Matthew chapter 3. I believe I quoted it word for word. But I just want to make sure. Because us as preachers, we can't get up here and preach something that's not in this holy book. Amen. So I want to make sure what I just said is accurate to what Jesus said. Matthew 6 and 33. I believe I said it right. Here it is. But seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Food, clothes. Amen. So seek him first. I wake up and I seek him first. Let's be above average, y'all. Let's be the new Michael Jacksons, the new Michael Jordans. Yes, let's be that. the new Janet. Let's be the new uh, uh, C.C. Wynans. Let's be the new Aretha Franklins. Let's be the new Coretta Scott Kings. Let's be the new Dr. Kings. How are we going to do it? We got to be different from other men and women in this earth. We got to seek him first. Because he loved you. He died on the cross for your sins. He died for you. He loved you enough to hang up to die. Shed his blood. Take all those beatings for you. What are you going to do for him? Just love him. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments, sister. Believe you know the word. If you love me, keep my commandments. When we love him and keep his commandments, he will set you up as a king in this earth. The Bible says... We, we understand this, you guys. We ought to be the head and not the tail. Yeah. We ought to be the lender and not the borrower. Because yeah. understand, when you borrow, you become servant to the master, to the lender, rather. Mm -hmm. So do y'all want to borrow the rest of your life, or do you want to lend? You want to have so much money, you say, here, brother, I hear, go ahead and get a church. Here, brother, go ahead and buy that house. I've seen you yeah. struggling, you and your kids. Here, buy a house. I got extra. I got plenty. I'm the trillion dollar boss. I got plenty of money. Here you go. Here's a hundred thousand. Go get you and your family a house. That's the type of love we ought to walk in. That's the type of love my dad, DP, walked in. Somebody was short 1500 My cousin Ricky Ricker can tell you. They, they, they tell my dad, Dad, listen, I ain't got 1500 I can't pay my rent. You know what I mean? These are stories you learn about my dad. Go to my YouTube channel, learn about my dad. Family time with DP. Straight out of Franklin Field Projects. FTWDP. You learn about DP. Daryl Burton Sr. DP is my daddy. He was a man of love. When we walk in love, you guys, that's the best way to walk. That's what Jesus walked in. We got about four more minutes to wrap this thing up. Amen. Amen. Yep, we're going to go for it. Yep. Walk in love. So let's conclude this. Remember, the topic of this, the, the, the sermon topic, the sermon title is God pulled up on Solomon. Yes. He appeared to Solomon right here in verse 7. I want to remind anybody that missed this. Verse 7. In that night did God appear to Solomon and said to him, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said to God, You have showed great mercy to David my father and have made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let your promise to David my father be established. For you have made me king over a people like the dust of the earth and multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people for who can judge this your people that is so great. And God said to Solomon, because this was in your heart and you have not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of your enemies, neither yet have asked long life, but have asked wisdom and knowledge for yourself that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted to you, and I will give you riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had that have been before you, neither shall there any after have the light. Be encouraged, y'all. Let's walk in this earth. Yes, yes. Become a king. If you're not a king already, become a king by obeying Jesus, walking with the Lord. Look at this king. And, and understand when you when God bless you to become a king. Because you obey God. Look at one of the greatest kings that ever lived before Jesus. Jesus is the king of kings. Don't get it twisted. Solomon was, was a king 
set above other kings, had more money than other kings because of his heart. Make sure your heart is right. If you got a church, make sure your heart is right. Focus on the people. Amen. I'm not in this thing for no money. Amen. God gives me money through TV shows. He gave me 12.5 thousand an episode on the Parenthood. I made a hundred thousand from Warner Brothers just for just for just for being hell. Warner Brothers put me in a hold deal. We're gonna pay you a hundred thousand dollars to hold you. This is after the Parenthood. So I'm not in this church thing for no money. I'm in this thing because I care about the people. I'm in this thing because I have a heart like uh, to help people. Yeah. The Bible says in Romans 10 9 that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. I don't want none of my family going to hell. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want nobody to go to hell. So I decide I want to be like my daddy and preach. Amen. Amen. We focus on the people, man. Like Solomon focused on the people. He asked for wisdom and knowledge. God gave him what he asked for, and he still gave him riches and honor and wealth. Jesus is Lord, y'all. Walk. Walk in this world. Obey Jesus Christ. Obey his word. Understand his will. Let's do his will. Read his holy Bible, y'all. Don't let this book collect dust. Amen. So I want to leave that with you guys right there. Verse 12. Wisdom and knowledge is granted to you, and I will give you riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had that have been before you. Neither shall there any after you have the light. Real quick. This is the best thing I have in my What's going on with that, bro? It's good? Yeah. Okay. So, so in conclusion, you guys, then Solomon came from his journey. So God set him up as a king higher than any other king. Because of his heart, he had a heart for the people. Pastor Nicholas, myself as a preacher here, one of the leaders, we keep the mind of the people at, at heart. Focus on the people and God will continue to bless us. Focus on helping the people, teaching the people this word, not the words of our thoughts. Our thoughts should line up with his words. When our thoughts line up with his words, we preach that to the people. Give the people what God gave us to help the people, teach the people the things of God, how to be built up in God, how to become out of poverty to riches. I used to be in the hood. Now I'm in Hollywood. I'm in North Hollywood with my boy Swim, with my son Cheetah, with my family, with my friends, with Isaiah here in North Hollywood. I came from the hood to Hollywood. I was pumping gas. I was hustling. I was doing things I had no business doing from the hood to Hollywood. When I went from poverty to riches. God blessed me with a hundred thousand dollar contract from Warner Brothers. Why? Because he showed me love enough. I had a heart and mind to, to seek God. It's a responsibility in it. I don't look at being on the parenthood to say, oh, I was on the parenthood. I got a big head. Oh, I'm some superstar. You can be a superstar, know who you are, but be humble and be meek. The meek shall inherit the earth. I said that to tell y'all, God, guys, and to encourage you that we could get the things we desire. I desired that when I was young, I used to look me and my boy, and he had phone from the movie Squeeze. We used, to, uh, we used to talk about, we used to just want to be, I think, want to be in movies. So we had our first opportunity to act in a, in a script, and we seen our first movie come out. It was like, it was like a dream come true. Wow, yo, we, we look at that. Yo, we up on the screen. God will do it for you. He did it for me. He's going to do more for me. He's going to do more for you. He's going to do more for you. He's going to do more for you. Just seek him. Keep your mind on him. And he will set you up as a king in this earth. Yeah. But if we disobey God and don't obey God, guess what? We can be the old, the regular folk in this earth. Everybody can be regular. But we can be average or above average. Yeah. The, uh, the above average is us that get a hold of this word of God and want to do it. I want to do God's will. I want to please Jesus. I'm about to get turned up for Christ. I'm about to get turned up. Get turned up for Christ, y'all. In conclusion, then Solomon came, and we're about to, about to let you go. Then Solomon came from his journey to the high place that was at Gibeon to Jerusalem from before the tabernacle of the congregation and reigned over Israel. And Solomon gathered chariots and horsemen, and he had a thousand he had a thousand. You guys, please keep it quiet for the microphone so it don't pick your voice up over the word of God. Check it out, you guys. In conclusion, we're about to get up out of here. Verse 14, and Solomon gathered chariots and horsemen, and he had a thousand. Look at this. This is telling you how rich Solomon was. Man, this brother was blessed. And Solomon, watch this. Watch what's about to happen. And, God, and Solomon gathered chariots and horsemen, and he had a thousand 
and 400 chariots and 12,000 horsemen which he placed in the chariot cities and with the king at Jerusalem. Verse 15 is three verses left. Verse 15 and the king made silver and gold in, at Jerusalem as plenty as had stones. Yo, this king was so this king was so blessed. Other kings had gold, swim. Other kings had gold and silver. But King Solomon was so blessed. He made he made he made rocks. And king and king and the king made silver and gold at Jerusalem as plenty as had stones. Could you imagine walking out your house and you got gold rocks? You walking on gold stones. Yeah. You walking on silver stones. Other kings, they got gold on their finger. They got silver on their finger. But you so rich because you obey God. You walking on gold rocks when you come out your kingdom. That's how King Solomon was. Let's get like King Solomon. Let's not make the mistakes he made, but let's do the things he did to become the great king that he was. Yeah. God pulled up on Solomon. In, co in conclusion, verse 15, And the king made silver and gold at Jerusalem as plenty as his stones, and cedar trees made he as the sycamore trees that are in the vow for abundance. We, the Bible says the devil come not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I come, Jesus come, I come that you might have life and that you have it more abundantly. Let's get that abundance life. Let's get that abundant life, y'all. We don't have to be Christians walking in here struggling. Bro, can I borrow a dollar? Can I borrow $10? No, we don't cast you. How much you need? I got a hundred for you. Go ahead, get what you need. You good? Hey, yo, uh, you need a hundred, you know, a hundred thousand? Let me call my, let me call my financial advisor. Hey, whoop, whoop, whoop. Hey, um, send my brother, send my cousin. Send my friend a hundred thousand. Let him pick it up at the office at nine o'clock Tuesday. He needed him and his family need a house. We them type of cats. We them type of cats because we choose to obey God. And Solomon had horses brought out of Egypt and linen. That's that abundance that he talks about. That's that abundance. We ought to be them Christians that be able to come to us. Hey Isaiah, man, yo, I ain't I need a new car. If now we gotta be wise, we don't say yes to everybody because we got a bunch of money. Yo, I need a new car. He already got a car, but he want a new car. Well, brother, keep your car, but if you ain't got a car, he call you, ain't got a car. I got five kids, I need to drive my kids to school. He come to you because you got so much money. Isaiah, I need a car, man, if you can help me out. You got so much money, you're like, yeah, man, hold on, hold on. Let me call my let me call my financial advisor. Hey, financial advisor, drop my boy Pookie off. My boy Pookie and Andrew, drop them off 100000 so you get a, no, 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 that's a house, but drop them off uh, 24000 for that car they need. Amen. You know what I mean? Pookie, you hear me? Pookie. Andre, just think about it. Think about it. This is real life. When your friends and your family call you, do you want to be the type of family member that, oh, don't call, don't call Isaiah, don't call Tyrone, they broke. How can we, how can we, we are, we ought to be above average, the blessed in the earth, the lender, not the borrower, the head and not the tail. When they call Isaiah, when they call, when, when Andrew, when, 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 when Steve and whoever they call us, if they're in need, if family's in need, yeah, you talk to your financial advisor, yes. Or you just check with your own books if you run your own money. When I was on parent, I had to find a financial advisor. But now, this time around, when God blessed me again and set me up higher than I ever was before, I can run my own money. I can get another financial advisor if I choose. But when people come to us, my point is when people come to us, we're able to say, here you go. Here's 10,000 for a car. Here's 24,000 for a car. Go get yourself a car so you can take your kids to school. Here's 100,000. Get yourself a house for you and your family. We don't, we don't bless folks. In conclusion, the last three verses. And, king, and the king made silver and gold at Jerusalem as plenty as... And the king made silver and gold at Jerusalem as plenty as, as stones. And cedar trees made he as the sycamore trees that are in the vow for abundance. Let's walk in that abundance. The devil come not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I come that you might have life and you have it more abundantly. That's what Jesus tells us. We can have the abundance of life. Verse 16. And Solomon had horses brought out of Egypt and linen yard. The king's merchants received the linen yard at a price. And they brought up and brought forth out of Egypt a chariot for 600 shekels of silver and a horse for 150. And so brought they out horses for all the kings of the Hittites, for the kings of Syria by their means. So this last verse I want you guys to rock with and run with this. Let's be the people in the earth. Let's be the kings, the type of kings in the earth. We can walk out of our house. Wherever, whatever state we got houses in, walk out of our house. Other people got normal stones in their yard. They walking out and they on Instagram taking pictures, showing off. But when we, we ain't got to show off, but when we come out, we the ones like Solomon got so much gold and so much silver, we walking on silver rocks when we step out. Amen. Why? 
because God pulled up on Tyrone Burton. God pulled up on Swim. God pulled up on Isaiah, Sky, Caleb, on all of you in here. When God pull up on you, something big's about to happen. Let's focus on God. And Solomon, and the king made silver and gold at Jerusalem as plenteous as stones and cedar trees made he as the sycamore trees that are in the valley for abundance. Let's walk in the abundance of life through obeying Jesus and walking with Jesus. God bless y'all. Love you all. Stay encouraged, everybody. Scott, you want to come up and, and go forth in the uh, the normal order of service? We, My mind was, we, sh we could have did the offering earlier, but my mind was focused on his word, so you want to go forth and do the offering. God bless you all. Amen. Gotta pay bills around here. You got <laughs> Nick. Gotta pay uh, two hundred for this whole day. Two hundred a day. So everybody, everybody, play their part. Give an offering. Your ties, y'all. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for everybody that came today, and thank you for those who gave, and those who got the money in. And we just pray that you bless their tithe and offering and double in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, come on. Everybody who want to give, feel free to give something from your heart. Amen. Mind, remember, God blesses us for whatever we give. We we focus on his house. Yeah. This keeps us getting a uh, paying, what is it, 200 a day. It makes whatever offering and tithes come in. It helps pay the bills for the church so we can keep having church and keep going to the world with the word of God. Amen. If that's all, we're going to close out. Everybody please stand. If you want to give a love offering to support this ministry, send a money order payable to Tyrone Burton, 355 Parkman Ave, box number 8, Los Angeles, California, 90026. God bless you.